MVC design pattern consists of three different components, the model, the view, and the controller. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of these three components. The model, the model represents the shape of the data. Now, what does that actually mean, the shape of the data? Think about if you are creating a model or you want to represent a dog, what will the dog contain? What will be the different properties or attributes so that you can use to represent the dog? Well, the dog might have any name. The dog can also have an age associated with it. The dog can also have some sort of a breed. The dog can also have some weight and some height. In this case, the dog is our model. This is the shape of our data and all the different things, the name, the age, the breed, weight, and height, these are the attributes, also known as properties, of that particular model. And eventually you will see that this model will be displayed on the screen. This model, the dog model, can be populated by an API, some service, or even a database. We will be creating the dog model or any kind of model in our Vapor application using classes in Swift language. Let's go ahead and check out what exactly is a view in MVC design pattern. The view simply represents the user interface. So your client, your user, is going to see the view, whether it is on a computer, on a browser, or whether it is on an iPhone screen. Anytime you see that your user or your client can see the user interface, whatever they can visually see with their eyes is considered a view. So on Apple TV, if your app is running, that's a view. On Apple Watch and iPad, that's also a view. A view is a thing that the user will interact with. Controller is the middleman. The controller sits in between the view and the model and processes a request and returns the response. Now this response can be a view or this response can be a data. Maybe the controller is simply returning you JSON information. A typical flow of a controller may look something like this. You have a view that is making a request. That request is intercepted by the controller. And the controller does something. Maybe it gets the data from a database. Maybe it gets the data from an API and then returns a response. In other words, you can always think of the controller as a middleman who is checking the request and producing some responses or giving some responses back to the view so it can be displayed on the view. So now hopefully you have a bit of idea of what exactly is MVC design pattern is. Let's go ahead and check out how we can implement MVC design pattern into our applications. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Swift UI in Vapor. This is a 12-hour course which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Swift UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link. Use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. In the previous lecture, you learn about the MVC design pattern, which stands for model view controller. And you learned that the reason that we employ MVC pattern is that the separation of concerns. We can create our controllers which is going to make sure that the data or the correct particular route is getting rendered. And that will be responsible for also connecting to the database and returning you the correct data. But there's still the question is, well, how do we even make our controllers? 
you can already see that we have a controllers folder which is created by default meaning when we created the app when we created the vapor application the controller folder was already there but it's completely empty so let's go ahead and add our controller our controller will be for movies so i'm just going to go ahead and call this movies controller next i'm going to import vapor and I'm going to go ahead and create a controller. In order to create a controller, I will create a struct and I will call it movies controller. It's usually a good idea to add the controller word with the controller so that we know that we are talking about a controller. We're also going to make sure that we are using the protocol or conforming to the protocol route collection. So any controller or every controller that you are going to create, you should have the route collection. Now, one of the functions that you need to implement when you implement or conform to the route collection is boot. The boot is basically a function where you will set up your routes. Now, since we're creating movies controller, we want our routes to begin with movies. We want to group them in such a way. We already learned about grouping in previous lectures, so if you haven't really uh, check that one out. So definitely go ahead and do that. So if you want to create group, I'm just going to use routes.group and I will call it movies. This is going to return me some sort of a grouped call. We'll just store it in a variable called movies. So this will be the name of the route. It will always begin with movies. Next, we can say, well, if you go to movies, dot get then use the function index now there is no function called index so what exactly we are doing over here is we are basically telling it that for the movies route when you begin with movies and when you simply go to slash movies then that particular action will be handled by the function index but there is no function called index so let's go ahead and create that function now this function has to be in a very special signature it must take a request as the argument. And now we can go ahead and create our index function. Let's go ahead and build it. And this will be throws, not throw. And there you go. We have created our movies controller. We have set up our group called movies. This means that all of our route will be starting with movies. And if we simply go to the movies, meaning the root route of, for the movies, then the request will be forwarded to a function called index, which is this function. Now, we have created the movies controller, which is great. If we perform a request to movies, it will be handled by the index function, which simply returns the index as a string. But we still need to configure this particular controller. Now, the way that we configured the controller will be in the routes file. In the route file, we can configure multiple controllers also. So I'm just going to go ahead and say app.register. And in the register, I can simply register the controller. Well, the only controller right now I have is a movies controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and register my movies controller. And that's it. Now, if I go ahead and run the application, and go to movies, it should display the index route. So if I simply go to movies over here, it's simply displaying index route. So working as just like before. Now what if our movies controller is also responsible for uh, passing an ID? Maybe I want the group to, to have an ID. I mean, there are many different ways of doing that. I can go ahead and say movies.get and I can define some sort of a path over here. So since I'm already assuming that it's going to begin with movies, I don't have to include movies anymore. Okay. So I can say movie ID. And the second part would be, sorry, the second part will be which function are we going to actually use? So in this case, I'm just going to use a function called show. Now we don't really have any function called show. So I'm just going to go ahead and add another function. I'll call it show. 
it must follow the same exact signature, meaning a function that takes in a request. So there we go. Now, how can I get the movie ID out of the params? That is something that we learned earlier on. I can use request.parameters.get and I can get the ID, which in this case can be movie ID. I will go ahead and get the movie ID. If, however, it is actually failing, then I can go ahead and abort. And whatever you want to, you can say internal server error or something like that. If, however, you do get the ID, then we can simply return the ID itself. So meaning everything that you're doing with the movies routes, like going to the database maybe, getting the movies and all that stuff, that will be done inside the movies controller. The controller is simply serving as a middleman. When the request comes, it comes to the controller. The controller decides that, okay, is this a correct request or not? If it is a correct request, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask, uh, you know, maybe get the ID, maybe access the database using a database layer, get the data and then uh, return it as JSON. So now if I run the application, and if I pass in the movie ID, then I should get some sort of a response back. There we go. I got the response back, which is simply the actual movie ID that I'm passing. So this means our controllers are actually working correctly. It is recommended that you use controllers, especially for a much larger application, because if you have all your routes, just like we were doing before, inside the routes function over here, then it can become very hard to manage because you can have 20, 30 different routes and you probably don't want to do that. So all the routes for the movies will go in the movies controller. If I have a user, then all the routes and all the stuff that is going on with the users will go into users controller and so on. So we will definitely be using controllers uh, in our applications later on.